Welcome to Weld.com. Today I have a gentleman with us, Mr. Sean Flotman, aka Dabs Wellington. And uh, man, you've been doing a lot of cool stainless pieces. Yeah, having a lot of fun with the artwork part of it. Looks uh, like it. Yeah. So today we've commissioned you to do a, uh, a special piece. We're going to do the Weld.com logo on some mirrored stainless. So we start out, we've, we just kind of printed this out as a guide. And you go ahead and just tape this down. And then what are you going to do? We'll get it on there nice and square, uh, tape it down. Uh, this is mirrored, so I'm going to have to be very careful with it. Uh, then I'll just take my standard Dremel here with a ball burr and uh, get the outline or whatever image this one, like uh, Bob said, the Weld.com logo. Uh, I will get the outline of that all done. Everything that I'm going to want uh, for reference or anything once the hood goes down, uh, marker disappears, it'll contaminate. Uh, center punch lines are good if you just need a general direction. But I've found uh, that a Dremel works best to give yourself a nice distinct uh, guideline to go through and you can easily distinguish it while you're welding, uh, you know, with the hood. So, I mean, it works great. So, what happens, we're gonna, you're obviously gonna TIG weld over this with a, a small filler wire. What happens in an area like there's an extreme amount of detail and you, you're gonna have to spend some time. Do you, do you kind of I try to jump that with less amperage. Do you stay away from it for a while? Is that your last fill? What do you uh, do? I mean, it's kind of like I guess I don't know. I never was much of an artist or painter, but I know when you do a painting, you uh, work back to front. So the same thing, the detail, uh, like the arc here, I'll probably save that for very last. Uh, that way, I get the most color out of it, and I can well, I can get the most color out of it with the least amount of amperage. Got you. Uh, and sense. that'll put it out front and kind of make that the accent to the piece. Um, and then everything else for even color, uh, I try to work and jump around just to where everything is heated evenly. Uh, if there was a lot more detail to one side or the other, I'd do it and then work back over, back towards it to where it kind of let the, uh, the chill block that I'll be working on to where everything gets to kind of a constant even temperature across gotcha. there. So when you said chill block, you're, you're actually going to tack this down to a heavy mass. Oh, this thing would just turn it. Out of this it. thing would just waffle up. You know, if you were just trying to do this open on a table, you'd warp get a up like crazy. you'd get a warped up, uh, burnt piece of trash. If you're looking to stock your well, scrap bin, it'll work perfect. Well, that's art. Yeah, it's, if you're looking for something a little more abstract, you could, absolutely. You could rivet <laughs> that on the side of your trash bin. There, there we what, go, perfect. <laughs> so we're gonna, what are you gonna run off today? We got Everlast uh, 210 EXT. Yeah, I'll be running at uh, 74 amps with the foot pedal. Uh, I try to take it, set the machine right at about the highest that I'm going to need, because uh, there is a very subtle temperature difference here where you go from pretty rainbows to burnt gray nasty. tossed <laughs> yeah you know start over yeah there's there's a lot of starting over and a lot of uh, scrap pieces in the beginning so while you're doing this um, you like a you like the larger cups I'm, I'm admiring your rig you got set up here <laughs> got you on a flex neck got the Shea spec back in Furic cup yeah, 232, uh, tungsten, big old long stick out. Do you do you want to maintain that stick out when you're doing these, or do you like the most like the of the time? Closer? Most of the time, this is just about what I'll run. Uh, you've got the amount of coverage you're going to need, whether you're right up next to it, whether you're out as far as I am right now. I see. So the gas lens is helping you with the big coverage all over the stainless. And okay, so first step, Dremel tool transpose outside background lines and anything that you're going to want there that you won't be able to uh, identify or see once things go dark okay Okay, uh, I see where you, you kind of did everything, and just like you said, we were joking around about the Dremel catching the <laughs> piece of paper. Boop, I watched it fly away, and you can kind of tell, but 
it doesn't matter because the general shape of everything is in here. And so, um, how are you going to go about this? I mean, we've kind of talked back and forth on a few things. Now that you've got this transposed into this piece of stainless, how are you going to go about it? What's your plan? Well, um, as I said before, I want everything to stay a good constant heat. Mm -hmm. uh, that way I get, I get as close to the same color, or at least a gradient of color, to where everything's not splashy, mismatched. Throughout the part. Throughout the like, part. You like know, that way there's some color continuity. One part's not going to turn out nice and Goldilocks and the other be all purple and blue and because that's indicating more and more heat. Exactly. Right? Uh, okay. So what I will do, um, I will probably start on the right hand side and work backwards. Uh, that way as I lay the weld and it cools, it'll actually look like your penmanship would if you were to hand write it out. Got it. Then I will do the gun and then the arc marks last, uh, that way the piece has got a decent amount of ambient heat built up in it already. Mm -hmm. I can do something kind of hot and fast and try still get, get some color contrast. Try and get a decent amount of color uh, without pumping too much in there and potentially burning, a, burning the part at the very end. So that didn't take very long. That's like seven, eight minutes of time right there, wasn't it? Yeah. On not, this particular piece. Not bad. I mean, you know, a nice, a nice simple logo, you know. Okay. Well, I'm going to get a hood on and watch. It's going to be interesting. Be right back. We forgot one step. I guess before we get started, we've got to have the old chill block in place, huh? Uh, Otherwise, this thing not unless you want to do this all over again. Well, uh, it'd be fine, but anyway, so we've got this big old heat sink. Uh, one inch. One inch hunk of steel. I stripped, steel. I stripped the... Uh, Mill scale. The mill scale off the outer perimeter of it, that way I get a nice clean weld. Um, with the mill scale on there, I mean, you can get a nasty, dirty pool around it that you'll pop, you know, you'll blow tacks. So, uh, nice clean perimeter. I'm gonna lay, I don't know, probably little half inch welds periodically around this that's probably overkill. Skip weld around here yeah. to keep this thing. Probably overkill, but a little more is better than a little less. Uh, okay, we got a little problem here. We're kind of warped up a little bit over here on this corner. Do we want to go for that last or first? We might as well go ahead with the three that are seated on there nicely, and then you can just go ahead and get that bounce up and down on that one. Okay. And if you've got logo or welding going on anywhere near your edge, close up to it, uh, it's probably not a bad idea to put a little more weld and tack welds in that area because mm -hmm. uh, your sheet will want to pull up obviously along the edge and where's the, where there's more heat. Now we're just looking for nice even. You don't want to push it up or push it down too much around the edges. You'll actually put a slight crown across in top here and that'll give you a big spot in the middle that's not getting even contact and you know this is all about keeping the material constant and even temperature. Okay. Otherwise, you know, you don't want any surprises once you get in the middle of this. Otherwise, we'll be chucking this to the side and Otherwise, starting I'll be square over here one. Prepping another piece there. while you're <laughs> there. We while go. You're finishing this. There one we up. go. All right.
What a project, huh? You have uh, out of the nitty gritty. Yeah, you have extracted the part from the chill block. Notice it got a little springy in there when it busted loose. It's got, but that's what stainless does. It so, does nature of the beast. And we're going to take care of that. You have uh, we'll cut you some mitered stainless bar stock, and you have labored to produce. You got a little wild, a little wild with the grinder. Frame coupons. That's right, some frame coupons. coupons. <laughs> and they're nicely sanded. You got a nice little pattern, but we're going to go upside down when we tack this together. So you just want to do the two corners here and tack them together like this. You're going to get a decent, yeah, okay. decent profile going on just where we can okay. get everything tacked together, squared up. Okay. Just somewhere to start. more tacks on this side and then turn it over and do the finish weld. A few more tacks. Uh, we've got a little rock in here. Uh, put some welds about halfway across here just to uh, keep everything from creeping uh, when I go ahead and lay a nice fillet weld across the miter joints here. All right, we've got everything welded up. Got our uh, coupon stock. Coupon stock is now a frame. It, it's now a frame. Uh, we want to do this, and then we want to do this very carefully, eh? Mm-hmm. Now, you're just um, eyeballing the space around here. Move that back into the corner like that. A couple clamps, a little patience. Got him done. Nice colors. Very nice colors. Like how you pulled some color in here and the contrast with the sanding marks and everything. We get this wiped down and get the fingerprints off there. Not mine. I didn't put mine on there. The ground perimeter, like you said, lets it set off nicely against the mirror. And the uh, to now what do you want to uh, you said you were going to do the little whacker packer and flatten it all back out. Yeah, so we've got a little yeah. bit of a rock in there. We'll get, we'll get real scientific about it. Good. Clean your Throw a, a couple washers on the back, uh, string it up with some wire. <laughs> really nice piece, sir. Appreciate it. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sean Flotman, ladies and gentlemen, aka Dabs Wellington on Instagram with some combination mirrored stainless and uh, some brush work on some coupon stock there. Some coupon stock. stock. Uh, nice little finish. Permanent. Don't have to do anything to it other than keep it clean. Very nice. Appreciate you being on, sir. That was an honor. Thanks for having me. That was fun. Thanks for watching Weld.com. And please uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook as well. I'd rather not intentionally give y'all anything for the blooper reel. The blooper reel kind of takes care of itself. What's that? I'm a huge tool.
<laughs> and B-roll. <laughs> I live to be 92 like my grandma. You better let me sh <laughs> without getting any flack for it. <laughs> You're all good. All right. <laughs> Whatever you do, erase that. My grandma finds out I said she sh Like. <laughs> So we're not only waiting on the camera guy, now we're oh, waiting on you. You've been waiting on me since day one. <laughs> Don't touch that. What do we do about the cooked fingerprints in there? <laughs> oh, we'll wipe those off. Yeah. That, that's where I break out my real high-tech stuff, like a bottle of Windex and a really good old T-shirt. Hey. Those, are, those are my Walmart shirts, the yeah. Sun's Out, Gun's Out shirt. There you go. <laughs> that's where I go to pick up my chicks with tube tops on. <laughs> You want me to do that or you, oh, you better do it. I, you can hold my hand I'll if spectate. you'd like. There we go. I need a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> Got that.